Lot Kongrach. You truly have the voice of a Dova. Alduin's allies will think twice after this victory. Nilivrach in Moro. True, this is not the final Krongrach victory, but not even the heroes of old were able to defeat Alduin in open battle. Alduin always was Pachlok, arrogant in his power. Usnagar Par, he took domination as his birthright. This should shake the loyalty of the Dove who serve him. Yes, one of his allies could tell us, Mat Mahus, but it will not be so easy to convince one of them to betray him. Perhaps the half Kossigun, the palace in Whiterun, Dragon's Reach, it was originally built to house a captive Dova. A fine place to trap one of Alduin's allies, hmm? Hmm, yes. But your Soom is strong. I do not doubt that you can convince him of the need. I have taught the way of the voice for centuries, and the Thum since long before that. But no, Dovakin. Others do not come here to train anymore. Saran, you are the first in over a hundred years. I meditate on the Rotmulag, the words of power. I counsel in their use. It is enough for me. Knowing a word of power is to take its meaning into yourself. Contemplate the meaning of a Rotmulag. You will become closer to that word as it fills your inner self. Will I teach you, Dovakin? What word calls you to deeper understanding? There are three to master. Fus, Faim, and Yol. It is called force in your tongue. But as you push the world, so does the world push back. Think of the way force may be applied effortlessly. Imagine but a whisper pushing aside all in its path. That is Fus. Let its meaning fill you. Sum Ark Mora. You will push the world harder than it pushes back. Which calls to you, Dovakin? Fus, Faim, or Yol? Fade in your tongue. Mortals have greater affinity for this word than the Dove. Everything mortal fades away in time, but the spirit remains. Ponder the meaning of spirit, Unslad Zi. Where mortal flesh may wither and die, the spirit endures. That is fine. Let that meaning fill you, Sum Ark Mora. You will find that your spirit will give you more strength. Which calls to you, Dova? In your tongue, the word simply means fire. It is change given form, power at its most primal. That is the true meaning of Yol. Soljek, power, 
You have it, as do all Dove. But power is inert without action and choice. Think of this as the fire builds in your Sum, in your breath. Sum Ark Mora. What will you burn? What will you spare? Yes, this was ages ago, you understand. There were more of us then. Before the Bruniki, the Akaviri came and killed all my Zema. I used to visit him from time to time, nearly crazed by loneliness and captivity. Tiraz Sivaz. He did not even remember his own name. I do not know how he came to be caught, but the Bronyun, the Jarl, was very proud of his pet, Pak. The Hofkasayun has been known as Dragon's Reach ever since. to you, Dova. It is... Think that is Fus. Let its meaning fill you. Soon What do you need? I, I worry about the other settlement. Am I supposed to? Hail, companion. Caused trouble in Whiterun, and I'll haul you into the Dragon's Reach dungeon myself. Good to see you again, friend. In honor of your service in battle, I am hereby granting you permission to purchase property in Whiterun. Talk to my steward if you're interested. You're not as dumb as you look. Well, first and foremost, there's repairs to make and wounds to heal. Folks are depending on us getting the city back in working order. Once things settle down, I'll be looking to recruit more guards for the city than to shore up our stores of food and water. The Empire might try and take the city back, or worse, we'll get a visit from a dragon. We've got to be ready for both. Aye, with a certainty. It was Talos that helped us win back the city. I'm as sure of that as the sun rising in the morning. Might even build a new temple and put Heimsker in charge of it. <laughs> I bet he'd like that. There is room in my court for a new thane. It's an honorary title, mainly, but there are a few perks someone like you could make use of. However, 
I could only grant the title to someone who is known throughout my hold, and who owns at least one piece of property in my city. If you help my people and purchase a house from my steward, and I'll make you my thane. As you were, then. Already has a house. <laughs> then by my right as Jarl, I name you Thane of Whiterun. Congratulations. I grant you a personal house, Carl, to watch over your home and this weapon from my armory to serve as your badge of office. I'll also notify my guards of your new title. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble now. I must have misheard you. I thought you asked me to help you trap a dragon in my palace. <laughs> You already saved Whiterun from that dragon. I owe you a great deal. But I don't understand. Why let a dragon into the heart of my city when we've been working so hard to keep them out? Alduin. The World Eater himself. But how can we fight him? Doesn't his return mean it's the end times? Spoken like a true Nord. I'll stand beside you, Dragonborn. Now what's this nonsense about trapping a dragon in my palace? I want to help you, Dragonborn, and I will, but I need your help first. What do you think the Imperials would be doing while this dragon is busy slaughtering my men? No, I can't risk weakening the city while we are under the threat of enemy attack. I'm sorry. Then I would be glad to help you with your mad dragon trapping scheme. But getting both sides to agree to a truce will be difficult at this point. The bitterness has gone too deep. Maybe... Hmm. What are the Greybeards? They are respected by all Nords. High Hrothgar is neutral territory. If the Greybeards were willing to host a peace council, then... Maybe Ulfric and Tullius would have to listen. Hi, Dragonborn. Maybe you can stop the dragons and this war into the bargain. Not... Done talking anyway. What do you need? For a dragon to attack Hinesgrove? Why? Why there? Is no place safe? I used to be an adventurer like that. Watch the skies, traveler. Yesterday I saw a dragon fly right over the city, headed northeast, towards Shear Point by the looks of it. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. 
Let's see here. I have a letter here from Quintus Navale in Windhelm. He said it was urgent. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Are you looking for help with something? This is a... I've already given you a job. Now get to it. Next time. We heard the Dragon Ren shout from here. You defeated him? I feared as much. I thought it was him we saw flying east after your battle. We are not warriors. What is overlooked in the Dragonborn is not permitted to any other followers of the Way of the Voice. You misunderstand our authority. The Greybeards have never involved themselves in political affairs. I see. The dragon will lead you to Alduin, but without the Jarl's help. Partanax has made the decision to help you. This is the road we have to walk. Even the Greybeards must bend to the winds of change, it seems. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. The old tales say that he can travel into Sovngarde to devour the souls of the dead. You must find out how he does this before he regains his strength and returns. Breath and focus. Wind, guide you. Deliver the message to the warring parties. If they will listen, I will do what I can to bring them to terms.
hope we reach Ancestor Glade soon. The townsfolk call me Captain because I used to be a sailor. It's so good to see you again. I've got a lot of respect for the Restoration School. I mostly deal with petty thievery and drunken brawls. Been too long since we've had a good bandit raid. Damn Tullius. He's pocketed men in the rift. It's dangerous having Imperial skulking about on the southern border of East March. It's about time they turn their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course. And the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. Alduin, the world eater of song and legend. If that's true, well, it changes the situation, doesn't it? Even Tullius may be forced to talk sense in the face of such a threat. Yes. I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. My father says we need to just get on with our lives. It's that easy. No. Last girl, I told you to leave my tools alone. You have yours, and I have mine. Let me know if you see anything you like. My master can be a bit short-tempered, but I've learned so much from him. Good to hear. You can be a difficult man to find. Thankfully, those couriers are tenacious. I have some thoughts. There are three crucial elements. Some may be easier to find than others. On the top of the throat of the world is a patch of unmelting snow. No heat can touch it. Then we need the tusk of a mammoth, ground to a fine powder as only the giants know how. The final step is tricky. It requires the briar heart from a forsworn of the reach. If you can bring me these materials, the file can again be made whole. On top of the throat of the world is a patch of snow that's never melted. They say the Greybeards taught it to ignore the sun, and the heat simply washes over it. The original file was made from this snow. We'll only need a small bit for the repairs. The final tempering of the file was performed with a type of old magic that's been lost since the Dragon War. The nearest modern incarnation of it is the strange rituals practiced by the Forsworn. With the heart of one of their Briar Warriors, I can lock the file's magic into its physical form. It's difficult to explain to the layman. Forgive me if I begin waxing alchemic. The ivory produced by those beasts is as hard as iron, but the giants have found ways to make it yield. They're able to grind it down so fine that it can be infused into the lattice of packed snow. The finished material has the delicate nature of fresh powder snow, but the strength of the hardest steel. Take a look.
What now? Anything good? My master can... I'll never... Ah, so you're an alchemist then. I'd better get going. Divines bless you. May the ground you walk quake as you pass. Hands to yourself, sneak thief. Wanderer like you must have plenty of tales to tell. But I'm afraid I'm too busy to hear. I've got a lot of respect for them. For a dragon to attack Kynes Grove. Why? Why there? Is no place safe? Make it quick. I get enough delays from politicians. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? Why, there's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. They are getting to be a problem. But I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that. Dragons or no dragons. Well, you may have a point. It's getting difficult to even move troops around without attracting a dragon attack. By all accounts, the Stormcloaks are suffering just as badly. Even Ulfric might see the sense of a truce under these conditions. Yes, yes, fine. I'll come to this Greybeard Council. For all the good it will do. The Greybeards have called a peace council at High Rothgar. And can you believe it? Both Ulfric Stormcloak and General Tullius have agreed to go.
Hope we reach Ancestor Glade soon. It. Men of violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Yes, yes. Which is why I allowed this violation of all our traditions. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. So, Arn Gear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. We have as much right to be at this council as all of you. More, actually, since we were the ones that put the Dragonborn on this map. Were you? Hubris of the Blades truly knows no bounds. Delphi, we're not here to rehearse your grudge. The matter at hand is urgent. Aldrin must be stopped. You wouldn't have called this council if you didn't agree. We know a great deal about the situation and the threat that Aldrin poses to us all. You need us here if you want this council to succeed. Ah, uh, very well. You may enter. I'm here because it's required of me, but there's nothing to be gained by talking to that murderer. Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? Let yes. Hear, hear. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that we would sit down with that Thalmor bitch. I say she walks or we walk.
Maybe so. But bringing her here is a deliberate provocation. We need to show Tullius we won't be pushed around. Hmm. It feels like a mistake to me. But I'll bow to your judgment on this. But she is to observe. Nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Alfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our you side? You know exactly... No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? One moment. Here we go. I just want to make clear that the only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. I have no authority to negotiate a permanent settlement, unless Ulfric is ready to sue for peace and turn himself over to Imperial Justice. Master Angir, We're are you going to, to just let him continue to... ...to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. We consider even sitting down to talk with these rebels more than generous. Enough posturing, Tolius. If you came to talk, let's get on with it. Fine. Let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? General Tullius, Jarl Ulfric, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar. And do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Our terms are simple. Riften must be returned to Imperial control. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. Elisif, are you really going to be a party to this foolishness? Do you really think Ulfric will just turn Riften over because some Imperial general barked an order? That's quite an opening demand, Tullius. Ulfric, you can't be taking this demand seriously. We can hold Riften against anything the Empire can throw at it. Besides, your Layla are. will never agree we will to... do whatever I decide is in the best interests of Skyrim. Are we clear? Yes, my lord. Come on, Tullius. You can't seriously expect us to just hand over Riften at the negotiating table. You haven't been able to take it back yet. Why should we give it up now? I am sure General Tullius does not expect something for nothing. Of course not. What will you offer for Riften, Tullius? Some empty promises? Maybe some more Imperial bluster? Enough, Galmar. Jarl Ulfric, what would you want in return? First, let me be clear. The Sons of Skyrim know from bitter experience that talking to the Empire is a waste of time. Or worse, Imperial promises are simply a way to lull you while they prepare a dagger for your back. Aye, we haven't forgotten Barkarth Tullius. But I accept the Dragonborn's invitation to this council, and I at least will negotiate in good faith. The council was your idea, huh? So tell us, what do you think Riften is worth? Markarth and our hands will be able to raid the Imperial supply lines out of Sol. You heard the man, Ulfric. We get Riften back. Now we'll see if there's anything behind your fine words. Think hard about your loyalties, brother. I expected better from you. I know how this works, Tullius. I've learned the value of Imperial promises the hard way. Never again. If you think we'll just hand over Riften, you're as deluded as your Emperor when he signed away our freedom to the Thalmor. Skyrim will never again bow to your false empire. Let's go, Galmar. I should have listened to you in the first place. You always were a fool, Ulfric. You're no better at diplomacy than you are in the battlefield. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreement? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphi? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. 
He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now, he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech. But what does Shut it have up. to do with the... If he's right about Alduin, we both have just as much to lose here, Tullius. Remember that. Now, back to the matter at hand. You know as well as I do that we can't hand over Riften on these terms. I'm sure you have something in mind. Damn right we do. You surrender Hjalmarch to us, and take Hidgrod Raventhorn with you. Sorely the Builder will take over as Jarl of Morthal. Where do these demands stop, Ulfric? Do you expect me to surrender all of Skyrim? It seems I have no choice but to let the Dragonborn decide. Although I'm starting to doubt your fairness. What say you, Dragonborn? Spoken like a true son of Skyrim. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Riften will be handed over to Imperial control. Jarl Leila Lawgiver will step down, and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. The Empire will withdraw its troops from the Reach, allowing Ulfric's forces unhindered access to Markarth. Jarl Igmund will go into exile, with Thongor Silverblood taking his place as Jarl of Markarth. Jarl March will be turned over to Ulfric, with Sorley the Builder assuming the Jarl ship. You both agree to this? The Sons of Skyrim will live up to their agreements, as long as the Imperials hold to theirs. What about you, Alistair? Are these terms to your liking? Speak up! I'm sure General Tullius is waiting to do your bidding. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Ellison. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Now that the Empire has been driven from the Reach, we can put a stop to the raping of her silver mines. That silver belongs in Skyrim. Leg it with me. We have a lot of work to do. Giving up Riften is a heavy price to pay for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Vignar, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word. My men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all. By Talos, that's an excellent question. I hope you haven't forgotten that little detail. Ah, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the Library of Skyhaven Temple. An unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the blades recorded many of the names of dragons they have slain. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has laid down. Ah, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power, shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon. After your victory over Aldrin, I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. 
Ah, please. I'm no master of Moish, like these worthy gentlemen. But it is written here in this scroll. Ud Avi, winged snow hunter, as I read. I return to Whiterun. I'll get my men ready to help trap this dragon. 